May it please you, my Lord, Sir Gedumu Ikai, for IEBC, I appear with my learned friend, Mr. Justice Munidia. I will deal with a few points, and my learned friend will conclude. At a very personal level, let me say this, my Lord, I have been in these corridors for over three decades. I have never seen a case like this. We don't seem to agree on anything, not what the facts were, not what the law is, not what the concepts are, not what the words mean. We can't agree on who the people are. We can't agree on basic structure. We can't agree on public participation. And I have never been in a case where so many professors have been cited. That makes the point we started with two days ago. This is a case about theory. This is a case about theory. If this was a case about live disputes between live people with live grievances, we would have had very different presentations. Let me ask a couple of questions and, and then sit down. Is there a constitution outside the constitution itself? I understand this judgment to be saying so, that there is another constitution outside the Constitution, so that if you want to know how to amend the Constitution of Kenya, you should look at the Constitution itself, then go and look somewhere else. We don't seem to be clear where that somewhere else is. I submit that there is no Constitution outside the Constitution, and there is no constitutional legitimacy outside the Constitution. Legitimacy is not in politics, it's not in society, it is not in economy, it is juridical. Two, is the spirit of the Constitution superior to the, to the Constitution itself? In my very humble view, my Lord, if you ever want to know a weak lawyer, is a lawyer who begins by saying, the spirit of the Constitution requires. Why would we go to look at the spirit when the Constitution is speaking for itself? The Dr. Const uh, professor, yes, sir. the spirit of the Constitution is one thing that people haven't talked about during these proceedings. Well, but this so-called this so-called doctrinal, basic doctrine, it is another word, my lord, for spirit of the Constitution. It has come in new disguise. In the old days, it used to be called spirit by poor lawyers. A good lawyer always looks at the black letter law. What did parliament say? What did parliament say? A good lawyer cannot start by saying, let us look at the spirit of the law. The law has no spirit unless it has been read. This constitution has told us how to amend it. Very clear, precise terms. Question number three. Is the amending, amending power provided in the constitution to be supplemented by reference to theory? It is our submission, no. The constitution speaks on its face. Two, uh, four, is the sovereign power of the people to ratify radical changes, which is secured by the referendum here, is it less valuable than the so-called power to call a constitutional convention? Tell me this, ladies, uh, my, my lords, tell me this. I was in Bomas, I was a delegate, I was not elected by anybody, I was picked by parliament. I went, we drafted the constitution, we voted on it. How is that better than me going to where I vote? In my, in my village of Dumberi, I go there, I stand in the queue, I vote in a referendum. Which one is better? The Constitution of Kenya has said every Kenyan who, who wants to will vote in the referendum. My learned friends are saying that is not good. If you are to change radically, give 
elect a convention. I find that argument very, very surprising. My lords, we are told that we, you cannot reenact the constitution. I agree. Is this constitution being reenacted? No. The, the Njoya case said, Ringera J and his, uh, his colleagues said, the way we were proceeding with the amendment of the, the first constitution was wrong because we were going to overhaul it without involving the public. So Ringera was saying, you are reenacting a new one. You are not amending. If you reenact, you need a referendum and you need a constitutional assembly. And that's what we did. That is not what we are doing now. The constitution, three quarters, 90% of this constitution is remaining intact, even under. So it is an amendment, not a reenactment. And there is absolutely no good reason for a constituent assembly. And the problem here, my, my, my lords, uh, arises out of this problem, which has not been well understood. And I take responsibility with my colleagues. We have not made the case very well. India is a constitution where parliament with a simple majority can make constitutional changes. That is why the court is scared that a simple majority in parliament can take India from being a republic to being a theocracy. That in Kenya cannot happen because in Kenya we have entrenched what my colleagues are calling the, the basic doc, doc, uh, basic structure. The basic structure is protected, super protected. That's why you can't change the boundaries of Kenya, you can't change the name of Kenya, you can't change the national anthem, you can't change the independence of the judiciary. Those are super protected. Kenya and India are like day and night. So this case that has been cited is an irrelevancy. When they say eternity clauses, a clause is a written provision. It is not being read from the air. It's not a straw that is being plucked from the air. An eternity clause is written in the Constitution. If Kenyans wanted eternity clauses, they would have written them. We didn't, and they don't exist. Now, let me say two things so I allow Mr. Monidia to his five minutes. Our our submission about IEBC quorum has probably not been understood by uh, our adversary. Uh, the court declared the provisions on quorum unconstitutional. And what we are saying is zero minus zero is zero. Once there are once the provisions on quorum were removed, there was nothing to go back to because the legislative process is you, first of all, you, you delete. When you delete, you then add the provision you want. The one you have deleted is no longer available for application if the one you have added is found to be unconstitutional. It's a simple argument, but we had not made it well. There is an argument made by Dr. Kaminwa, my two distinguished uh, colleagues, Elisha Ngoya and Mudomi Thionkolu, which is mind-boggling in my very humble view. They say, if there are no regulations, if there are no regulations, Sec Article 257 is dead, and we therefore cannot say we have a framework. Now, this is exactly where Doug Dale J took us in 1986. He had said, we, you could not enforce human rights in Kenya because the rules for the enforcement of human rights had never been promulgated by the Chief Justice. I thought my colleagues were the progressive side of this divide here. 
But this is a very backward uh, view of the Constitution. Titus Alila versus the AG in Kisumu put it very, very well. It is not the function of the judiciary to determine in general terms whether or not the said statutes were inadequate or inelegant. That was uh, Ochengje, and we, we urge my lords uh, to adapt that, uh, that, that reasoning, because in our very humble view, it is the correct reasoning. Thank you very much.